Hello, dear friends. I have a couple of things to, I hope, humbly share today. Uh, one in being that I was convicted about something, and I want to talk about that because I have recorded a video with y'all. And another, I wanted to talk about the kingdom of heaven, the parable of the sower. Just real quick, and a lot of people have a lot more insight into this than I do, but I just want to be brief in what I talk about today. Uh, I hope everybody's doing good and staying safe and not that the Lord's helping you not to worry too much about having to go out and work in this time or not working at this time and maybe needing help. Uh, just please keep laying your requests before the Lord because we know that He hears them. He's faithful, all right? So let me start with the last video I shared talking about an Easter service prayer I heard online. And I tell you, I'm so thankful for conviction and for the Lord. He speaks through people. You know, that's why we have to be so careful not to reject what people might say to us that might feel contrary. It might feel like someone's attacking us. We want to just take that before the Lord and say, Lord, was there any truth in what that person said? I'm bringing it to you. You know, well, I don't trust men, but I trust you. You know, we want to do that, not being very quick to be offended about it, so we can take it to the Lord rather than dismiss what somebody might have said to us. This is a little bit of what happened to me after I shared that video. Um, so I shared that video, and in it, real quick, in case somebody didn't watch it, I was just talking about how it just bothers me so much to when I can look around and see the maybe lies or someone not understanding or deceit coming out of people's mouth and deceiving people, right? And that's understandable to feel that way. But a precious person made a comment and said something, said a lot of stuff, but one of the things that stuck, stood out to me struck me in the heart was this and it was that um oh shoot now i can't even remember it but basically was saying that yes many are in error um and things like that but we were once in error right we once didn't have a correct understanding and we're still learning aren't we we're still being corrected in the way we think about the scriptures, about things, you know, by the Lord. And, yeah, it was something about maybe praying for those who are in error. And that just really struck me. And I thought, okay, Lord, you know, that came onto my mind. What that person said just really pierced me. I want to come to you and make sure I wasn't boasting myself over Someone who might be in error and sharing things that weren't accurate. I want to make sure I'm not doing that. Because I have to remember, I was once ignorant, misguided, in error, right? And I wasn't that way intentionally. I didn't want to be. It's just the way it was, you know, until the Lord shows us a little more and a little more and a little more truth. And so I just wanted to make sure I wasn't acting in any arrogance or pride over anybody. And not trying to bring shame and condemnation on any person by naming them. Because what we're wrestling with are the mindsets in that person and the set of beliefs that they have. Not that person themselves. Right? Right? You know, because we're to love all people. But, yeah, what we're wrestling with and coming against and wanting to expose are the mindsets and beliefs that might be leading people astray. But here's the thing. Unless the Lord 
opens their eyes or I heard somebody sharing about this last night or like was done to Saul just stopping him dead in his tracks and showing them the error of their ways unless the Lord had turned my world upside down about a year ago about the way I was thinking about certain things in the scriptures we're going to continue on that way. It is the Lord that does that by Spirit. You know, when a heart is ready, when it is the right time, He's the one that does that. So we really can't, we have to be careful of pride or arrogance to exalt ourselves above anybody because it's all the Lord's doing. You know, so I'm thankful for that comment. It got me to thinking. The Lord used it, you know, to make me think. What have you received, Misty, that was not from me? What understanding do you have that I didn't give you? Stuff like that. Even if I'm able to be humble in a situation, that's a gift from the Lord to be humble. You know, um... So all these good things from the Lord we cannot boast about. They're gifts that we can go about and do His work, aren't they? So we have to be careful of that. I have to be careful of it. And I'm thankful for that correction that I received. But rather pray for that person to the Lord. Lord, please open their eyes. Please show them the truth. Please protect those that are listening to that person. I'm trusting you, Lord, to protect your own, to use this for good somehow. I'm trusting you that you're in control and you've got a plan. And do pray for that person because we don't know that that's not a true brother or sister in the Lord that is only in error right now. And in a second, the Lord can change the way they think. So we want to be careful. We're wrestling with the mindsets and beliefs that are inaccurate, not the person. So this couple of scriptures I wanted to share, I'm turning us off. Oh, I also wanted to say, I hope, I should have said it at the start. Uh, the email I was using that some people email me on, uh, just to talk back and forth, which I enjoy, I'm going to have to get rid of that email because um, I believe it's you know, all these spam and trolls and all these things going on. I just don't, I feel concerned about using it anymore. It wouldn't have hurt any of y'all that used it, but for me, I'm going to end up trying to delete that and make another one. And I'll share it, you know, for anybody that would want it or that I speak back and forth with because I really appreciate the insight and the things that I hear from other people and, um, you know, what's going on in their life. And we've got so much to learn from each other. So let me just talk just for a very few seconds about the kingdom of heaven when it was compared to the parable of the sower. This has to do with what I was just talking about. Um, well, let's remember this. And you guys know these scriptures. They're very common scriptures. But it says, By grace you have been saved through faith. Not of your own selves. It's the gift of God. Not your own works. Lest any man will boast. That's what I was just talking about. We got to remember that. You know? That way all the praise and the credit and the honor and the respect and everything goes to the Lord. But... Y'all know the story of the, the sower. The farmer went out. He sowed seed. And while people were sleeping, the enemy came in and sowed tares among the wheat. Weeds, right? And so I'm paraphrasing this. this you can read all about it there in context. But the servants come to the farmer and said, Should we pull up the weeds? Let's just go get rid of the weeds and pull them up. But we're told here, no. The farmer said, no. This is Matthew chapter 13. Let both grow together 
until the harvest. Let the wheat and the tares, let the, the good grain, the wheat, grow up with the weeds and the tares. He said, because if you pull up the weeds right now, you may harm the wheat. All right? So, what I was going to say about that, I'm not having brain lapses here. Um, you know, he said, don't go pull up the weeds and the, and the tares and everything. Let them grow up together. Oh, and I want to go over to this scripture that says, uh, and I didn't write down where it is, but y'all are going to know what it was. It has to do with what I just said about these scriptures. It says, judge nothing until the Lord comes. Then he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness, and he will expose the motives of men's heart, and then each one will be accorded their praise from the Lord for what they've done. Judge nothing until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in the darkness. He will expose the motives of men's hearts. So see, you've got false and true beliefs growing up together. We might can see that that's not accurate and that's not the truth. But the farmer said, no, don't go remove that. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to use it for the good. All right? I'm in charge. And when I come, I have the ability to see into a person and see their motive and their intention for why they did what they did, why they said what they said. Me and you do not know the intentions and motives of these people's hearts that we might say they're teaching error, they're teaching wrong, they're deceiving people. We might say they're purposefully doing that. But really and truly, we don't have the ability to see and know the innermost part of a person, their motive and their intent behind every action and every decision. Only the Lord knows the inward heart of that man. And we're told here, just don't judge it. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring out into the light what's going on in the dark. These motives, intentions, secrets. He will bring that out into light. He will let the truth be known. You know? Don't remove those weed, uh, weeds and tares with that wheat. Let it grow up together. Wait until the Lord comes. Wait till the farmer comes. He knows he will send out the harvester, and he will give directions on how this is to be done. I hope that point's coming across. Because when people are sharing and doing and teaching and all this, we might think it's very easy to see what's going on, but we cannot see what the hidden motives and intentions are. We can hardly see that of our own self. You know what I mean? There was a time when I was, the things I was doing was the to the best of my knowledge of what I knew based on what understanding I had. And I was doing it sincerely. Paul was sincerely persecuting the church of God. Zealous for the traditions of his fathers, what had been passed down to him and what he'd been taught. He was doing that with all his heart, thinking that he was serving the Lord. And the Lord had to show him different and say, look, it's me you're persecuting. You see? So we got to remember that the Lord's in charge. Think about Pharaoh real quick. He seems like the enemy and the bad guy, right? But didn't the Lord say, I rose Pharaoh up for this very moment, for this very purpose, that my glory and great power might be shown through him. The Lord's in control. Um, so that's just a little bit I wanted to say that I apologize if I set a bad example. 
um, or anything like that. I do not want to do that and that we all be sensitive to the Lord's correction that may come through people. We don't want to disregard it or, you know, feel like they're stepping on our toes too much or feel insecure because somebody might have corrected us or come against us, but just take it to the Lord. We want His truth to be made known. We want that to trump everything, to trump our pride, our feelings, our our hurt feelings, everything. We want his truth to grow, to go out, all right? And pray for these people that might be in error, might be teaching wrong, might be doing wrong, because we don't know if they truly are a wolf in sheep's clothing or they're young in the faith, and they just don't know yet. The Lord has completely changed the way I thought from a year ago, two years ago. That's constantly evolving and changing, coming to know him more, you know, listening for him, letting him teach us and guide us. So that's just a little bit I wanted to share. It got way too long, but I thank you, brother, for the correction, which you might have not even known you were doing, but the Lord used it to pierce my heart. I'm so thankful. All right. And I love you all. And uh, we're all learning and growing, aren't we? But we want the truth of Jesus Christ to be, it is what will remain at the end of the day. Everything else will fall away. You know, the Lord's in charge, all right? He's protecting those sheep that are following someone who might be in error. He is. And he knows they're insincerely following that person. I mean, sincerely following that person, thinking that that is the truth. The Lord knows the motive and intention of the heart. We got to remember that. We're not able to say it. So I love y'all. I hope y'all have a good day and take care. And uh, I'll be putting a new email up as soon as I get it done. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.